This homework is about saturated vapor pressure, or how much water can we get in here? So you remember we have this curve, and this curve represents the maximum amount of water that you can hold in air depending on the temperature. So we're plotting vapor pressure, which is the partial pressure of water in the atmosphere in kilopascals versus temperature. The higher the temperature, the more water you can keep in the air. So we have an equation for this as well, but let's look at the graph first. Let's say it's 15 degrees in a room right now. A little cool. How much water can we hold in the atmosphere? Well, we simply go up to here, and that tells us the maximum vapor pressure that we can hold in the atmosphere, and we do that by coming over here on the graph. And we find that it's a little under 4 kilopascal, or 4,000 pascal, is the partial pressure of vapor that we can hold in the air. So, let's say we're here, about halfway between no moisture in the air and saturation. Remember what we call that? That's called the relative humidity and that's the vapor pressure in the atmosphere divided by the saturated vapor pressure. In this case, it's 0 0.5 or 50 percent. So let's say we're at 50% humidity at 15 degrees C. What happens if we drop the temperature? If we drop the temperature, we're going to go in this direction, right? So we'll drop the temperature here, and at some point we're going to interact with that saturated vapor pressure again. And if we look down here, we're going to call this the dew point temperature. Why do we call that? Well, when you drop the temperature, when we get to saturation conditions, we start to get dew forming. So today's homework is about understanding how temperature and vapor pressure are interrelated and how that controls how much water we can hold in the atmosphere. And then that, in turn, tells us about when we might form precipitation.